Welcome to Hobby Hammer issue 11. Um, and this week we've got a bit of a, I think we've got a bit of a packed week this week. Like we were starting off, like, oh, maybe we've not got a lot to talk about, but. No, no, we've been, we've been chatting for like half an hour and keep telling each other, shut up, shut up, save for the show, save for the show. Yeah. And this is the time that just made it through, right? Is like, we yeah. actually started. So welcome to the show. I'm joined today by Miles. Say hi, Miles. Yo. Um, Hello. This is going to be split across both of our streams in the preparation for moving over entirely to Little Legend. Is it Little Legend Studio YouTube? Or is it just yes, Little Legend? Yes, Little Legend Studio. Um, and it's studio. I only own the one. It's not studios. What so, do we have on issue 11? <laughs> issue 11, we've got... Issue 11. <laughs> issue 11. Beta Garmin having dropped last yes. weekend, which actually just before... it. it We've had very busy weeks, I think. So it's felt like a long time since Beta Garmin has come out. Then we've got the drilled FAQ, otherwise known as just 1.1, the old world FAQ, which has changed some things and some stuff. We've got random topics. What we've got random topics, right? I'm going to Australia next week. Dumbass that I am, I'm going for one weekend. I'm flying. <laughs> I thought, you, I thought you were rescheduling it, as in, like, extending your trip. Because it I is was, just a ridiculous thing to book. But then I had to run a business on top of everything and, and try and be a father and try and be a husband, you know, and try and be all these different things that I just simply haven't got the time for. I mean, my coffee machine broke yesterday, so I've had to try and become a coffee repairman, like a coffee machine repairman. And, and like I'm trying to run a business, I'm trying to organize a course for Australia. And by the time my consciousness or I have enough like mental breathing space to think, oh, I should extend the date. It's next week. I have to go and, and I, I still need to book tickets for it. Like I haven't booked flights. I haven't booked accommodation. <laughs> so you can extend it. You can extend it. That's easy. I, 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 I'm going to Australia next week. I, I'm in that mode right now where I'm worried and panicked and print. Oh, Jesus. I'm. 3D printing. Just don't get into it. Don't get into <laughs> Haven't it. you just done a video on how it's easy to get into 3D printing? Let's let's cover this then. Let's let's start off with 3D printing as a surprise topic for the episode. Miles, you've just got into I 3D printing. <laughs> I hate it. I, I've got all this equipment downstairs. I keep getting told how easy it is to use, and my prints are getting worse. Like my my, my prints are just coming off the bed, the amount of resin I'm wasting. The, the videos I'm trying to watch on top of organizing the trip to Australia, on top of trying to run a business, on top of painting, on top of preparing a goddamn coffee machine. I'm also trying to learn how to 3D print as well and learning what errors. Um, when I make these adjustments, uh, the, these minor adjustments in the settings, it's making everything worse. Right. Everything is getting worse all the time. <laughs> everything is breaking around me and I haven't got the time to solve any of these issues. So the, this is quite a standard thing for 3D printing. Is it, do you know, like it, it can very much from the outside look like it's, oh, you just press go and it's done. But it is a big time sink in itself. It's, do you know, like it, it's, another, it. it's another hobby and it, it doesn't tend to save you. It saves you a bit of money if you're looking for that, but at the cost of a lot of effort. Because it can take hours to set up a, a, a build plate anyway to print out some models. Now, one of the things that I recently got was when you, oh, I recently got a heated, um, like when you're making mead, <laughs> like for everyone that right. makes mead out okay. there, I, I don't make mead, but it got suggested to me. Or like alcohol, when you ferment it in the, the fermenter. You have heated strips. Now, this could be an issue for you. you. Heated strips that keep the outside of the fermenter warm. And I'll link I'll link this below. You can put one round your resin vat and it keeps it at a consistent temperature because a very common failure I find is that, is that your resin is just too cold. Other than that, why don't ever play with your settings. If you get a good print, just print and be happy. Because... I, I had what settings are you playing initially. then? I had excellent settings initially. It worked, and then the more I printed, the more it failed. 
Uh, and then I, I, I tried uh, changing something about uh, like the exposure time, changed that. Oh, didn't like that. Changed it exactly back. Oh, didn't like that either. And it, I, it just... It, so I know this is over and over again. People will tell you, oh, it's bed level. And it, a lot of the time is bed level. So if you... What I do for it is I leave my tank in with no resin in or anything. So everything's clean. Auto home with the screws loose and it sends it down to the bottom. And then I, pr so the tank is in there and then I press down on top of the build plate and tighten it up. Rather than doing like a thing with a piece of paper underneath it or anything like that and then switching that to a resin tank. Do it, just do it with the build plate in there and it tends to just work quite easily with that. So then, then your bed's leveled and I've got a magnetic That's bed. 100% so get a magnetic the bed. Go on. You're the problem. Because you said, oh, that tends to work easily. It's that word again, easily. <laughs> so if I buy my heated mead strip, if I level the bed, uh, there'll be another product that I have to buy. There'll be another thing that goes wrong. There'll be another setting. There'll be something. They'll get no, the this thing. With technology at the moment. There's always something else that's going to go wrong. And it's always going to cost you more time of money and investment, and it's just simply not worth it to anybody out there. Any anybody think you need to get three D printing? Don't. No, yes, so don't. So I would half support that recommendation of don't get into three D printing if you don't specifically want to like find problems and do you know that like, and solve it when it's just so frustrating. Mm. Just buy them off Etsy, man. For how much it costs you off Etsy, I know it seems expensive when you're just looking at 3D prints on Etsy and stuff. Yeah. But, and you're like, oh, well, the resin only costs this much and the, the printer only costs this much. Uh, but it honestly, like, it's, no, I, if you I, think about your time, I mean, it's just not worth. I, I, I'm in a mood at the moment. So, like, everything, like, the, the towers are falling and everything seems to like a lot worse <laughs> than it is. Um, like I, I'll go through this mentally, like off, like I'm mentally throwing it across the room and burning it. Whereas I know I'm just going to keep persisting and doing it again and again and again until it comes right, and then it will feel great. Um, but I, I, if you're interested, I am launching a how to start 3D printing <laughs> video series on Patreon with somebody who knows much, much more about this subject. Joe came down and he showed me the setup, filmed everything. Uh, and I've also been documenting like idiot me's uh, uh, journey through this as well. Somebody who isn't as clued up or as emotionally stable as Joe dealing with this kind of thing. So you get to watch me scream at the camera if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, what I but will 3D say, printing, bro. the through the window, like motion of a three D printer is understandable, because the the three D printers just outside the room are one of them. PLA extrude of Ender three version two. If anyone's interested, so they can laugh at me for how easy it is to get them working and using. I've I had the, I've had that for like a year and a half, two years, maybe even just a bit more. And it's worked for approximately a month and a half of that. And every two weeks, I've attempted to fix this printer. More frequently at the start, less frequently at the end, as I got more and more annoyed with it. Mm. But yeah, for, for like fucking 20 months out of the 24 months, let's call it. It is. I mean, if shotguns were available in this country, I would have, shotgun, I would have blown its bits by yeah. now. The but problem is as well, they'll I just tease you. They'll tease you with like, oh, here's a little bit of a print. It's got better. It's got better. Yeah. No, nothing. So at the moment, like, <laughs> I've got half of it, like, all perfect quality. It looks like injection molded plastic. And then the rest has been stripped away. And I know, do you know the worst thing is? Cleaning out the bed afterwards. Like, I just have to drain all the resin out, clean up the bed. I just don't have to, I just don't have to deal with this anymore. Have you got a tank clean function on your printer yeah so you just expose yeah, to, the bottom like yeah zap. yeah is that but they, like i'm doing that so much I'm, I'm costing myself in more in resin doing that than i am actually printing the damn things out oh i'm just i like i haven't even, even tried supporting a mission okay that's <laughs> anyway that's, 3D okay. Printers. let's move on let's move on before i punch a hole in the wall <laughs> yeah so at the start of the week beta garmin came out or was it last saturday and 
there was a lot of talk on the internet. Like the internet was split. And I mean, like of people that got early copies. I did not. Hmm. Miles, I don't think you did. But there was no. split reviews over whether or not it was a good book. And I'm hmm. going to say they were right. <laughs> Right, like, the, the split see, reviews are right. Okay, see, so see those two houses over there. Is the middle one is right. Well, if you want more of an in-depth uh, uh, coverage of this book, there are five videos on your channel right they, now. They, there's one on YouTube, and then there's a bunch stacked up on Patreon to right. give them the early early access to it. But he's yeah. So this this book, you, so Miles, you started saying off like when we weren't recording. Oh, it was like, shut up, shut up. Yeah. Let's, let's start. You, you were not too excited about it, right? And I was also not excited. I think it's a consequence of... Uh, there's a few things. Um, it's a consequence of the declining quality of the heresy releases overall. Hmm. So we had the first book, pretty decent and a rocky start to uh, 2.0 but you felt like okay they're gaining their feet let's go on to the next release and see how they do and then the next release was that uh, reprints of pdfs that they had the exemplary battles that came in in september yeah so again i i'm not and this this is the first time since god knows i'm not buying this book it's it's not worth the money yeah and then this book that came around i'm again thinking should i invest in this should i not whereas before any black book release was an automatic buy you have have to fight each other to get these books because the quality of the writing the art oh dare i say it rules whether you like them or not it always sparked debate (laughs) i'm I'm glad now i'm glad you said that because i think that is key whether you liked the rules or not they always spark debate. It always gave you something interesting to talk about. When the Custodies came out against the Thousand Sons, it, it was interesting to talk about. Uh, like, I haven't looked at any of the rules in here, and I've only just started reading the narrative, but it reads more like a mainline uh, Games Workshop release. Uh, so the... Uh, and you said something fascinating uh, in the run-up to this, that you... I, I don't want to. Uh, God, God, put words in my mouth. I, yeah, I don't want to put words in my mouth. Put but words in my mouth. It's almost like the 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 the, the history and the law is um, not important to you. It's the rules you read these books for. In in these specific books, because of <laughs> yeah, man, we both spent so much time reading the novels. Sure. Uh, it will be a couple of months before I've got the energy to actually sift through all of those. Do you know, like, mm-hmm. when a new rule book yeah. comes out? And plus, it's it's not by... I'm gonna, You're putting this a lot is, more politely than you did before the show. <laughs> no, it's, You're putting this a the, lot more politely. The, the actual quality of the writing within those, mm. those things... They've not been thought out as much. They've not got an overarching plan that's going to stretch across multiple books or even, like, they, so they just the about books. stretch across that own book. And Alan Bly had a singular vision, yeah, in the Black Books, where mm-hmm. he knew where he was going and what where he what like, he, yes. where, where he'd come from. He had his roots as a working man. And... So I, I, I can give you a good example here. So in book one, in book one, mm. I think one of the opening quotes was from a princeps from the uh, what, what's the null legio the the legios for sinister like the site like, yeah they had a quote from princeps from legio sinister so that meant even that book one Alan knew what the legio sinister were, were and how they'd be incorporated five six seven eight books down the line yeah. He, th- there was a plan, there was a vision, like you said. There, w- there was this overarching... Uh, th- th- oh, it's such a beautiful man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but... It doesn't feel like that's there anymore. And even things like... Uh, uh, so I really like reading the law in these books because it supplements the Black Library books. So the Black Library books are first-person accounts. Yeah. Uh, directly from the horse's mouth, with personal bias, obviously. But... The black books were always presented as a historical recollection 
uh, a, a retelling, and they had an underlying bias with that as well. So I I I liked the author playing with those two modes of storytelling and how you can work in certain uh, uh, narratives into that. I, I, even things like sentence construction. So I know the early books were criticized for their quite lengthy and complex uh, uh, sentence construction. That's very much in the vein of uh, like an academic writing. So he, mm. he's writing for uh, an academic writing for another academic. He's not writing for entertainment. <clears throat> I don't think they have that same, not level, but that that same style and approach to writing these books as they did. No, well, I don't. Um, I don't think they will because he's that's Alan Bly specifically putting far too much effort than you would as a normal employee or even as a very dedicated yeah. employee. Alan yeah. Bly pouring his life into the entire project, and I don't. And I think it's almost unfair to hold it is account it is. to that. Um, and it speaks volumes of Alan Bly doing that for Heresy at the start. Now, when you say you pour in over, and this is sort of like we're getting to the rules and stuff discussion in mm -hmm. a second, but when you say, you know, like you love drilling down into that that narrative the section of the book, mm -hmm. are you doing that within the first week of the book's release? No, 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 no. This, no. And so this is it, gave, this is it. He's, yeah, when I, gave you, when I gave you a new book, so when the Blood Angels book came out, book nine, but no, uh, whatever book it was, yeah. Um, I, I flicked to Sanguinius's rules first. Yeah, because, because it's, just, it's too hard to drill down into it straight away. Because as a snap judgment, to take things in in a couple of minutes, I can digest the rules quicker than I can the law. So when yeah. I when I flick through it, it's, it's flicking through like, oh, look at the color place beer. It's always the rules first. Yeah. Yeah, and because I, I, I think it'd be like flicking to a random page in a novel and being like, oh my God, cast them on off, did this. It, with no. no context, with no context. So mm -hmm. I think it's unrealistic to think that people are going to be immediately, and th there will be a certain amount of people that do just like page one, what are the, what is the narrative in this book? Mm -hmm. But it's a much more accessible point for us all to like, what are these rules yes. and how is it going to affect exactly how we are going to be gaming? Yeah. Now, have you seen all the controversy? about Shattered Legions and Night Lords, Dreadnoughts not being able to charge or anything? Uh, so this is point two why I haven't really been interested in the release. Uh, I, I like getting books and I like reading them myself. I like forming my own opinions. I like forming mm. my own opinions in the vacuum. I don't like reading pre-formatted thoughts that influence yeah. how I see the book in the future. So you have the cycle of, of book releases, of influences, of... Uh, uh, previews i avoid completely <laughs> which we're about to, which we are literally doing now um yeah yeah it, and it, uh, so you know, I, it's not I a bad avoided that completely it's I, not I a bad what chance. The controversy is so and this is for any for anyone listening i actually agree with you miles but i think it's mm. cool to if everyone even if what like i tend to i'll read the book and mm -hmm. form some thoughts on the book and then go and check out what everyone else thought of it yeah same, same so, exactly the same, yeah. Yeah, because then you've got, like, what are my initial thoughts? And I can, like, anyone out there listening to this will have the ability to form, form your own thoughts, I imagine. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then you can, like, have sort of your own bias, which is nice, going into anything yeah. that you listen to. Yeah, if I'm going to have a bias, it's going to be my own, damn it. Uh, so what, exactly. what are the controversies? So, number one, uh -huh. the, the, prem, the prime one... Okay. Night Lords, <laughs> Night Lords, Dreadnoughts count as one model, and the flaw oh. to a like a single model unit, Night Lords specifically here, is that you can't charge anything that doesn't have a lower unit strength than you. Oh God! Uh, and night, so Night Lords, so Dreadnoughts count as one. No, and this is specific to Night Lords that flaw. Oh, but okay. yeah. And that is definitely a really, really bad thing. And I'm going to say That's a couple a of bad things and then why I think it shouldn't matter yeah. fully. Now, second, you've got a very confusing, like down to the minute detail set of rules for Shattered Legions. Whereas in Heresy 1, I, it was yeah, like... I, I read them, didn't understand them. I, I just, 
I didn't have the brain, I didn't have the bandwidth to, uh, uh, to take them all on. Well, this is it, and I think that it's going to slow down. Although they put like in there, it's not made for tournament play, which is an interesting statement in itself because there hasn't really been that many or any heresy tournaments. Like it's actually been a game that shied away from tournaments for a long time. Mm. Now, although they've put that, people will be using them and trying to trying to make a good list with them and things like that. And it will be hard for your opponent to disseminate that information and just store it. And it's changing all the time. Every phase mm. a unit can change what what term legion rules, let's call them, a shattered legion rules right. they've got. So that's going to be switching about all the time, which can be messy. Mm. On the flip side of that, I like how they've tried really crazy things in the book. It's like what you were saying before about like when you mentioned custodies. They're trying mm-hmm. some mental ideas. Like that. I, I tend to rate mm-hmm. things on like the mentalness, like coolness <laughs> scale. Yeah. And uh-huh. also <laughs> like also how it works matters, but yeah. you can do we can just not and this isn't good like book advice because they need to get it right for like night lords contempts and stuff but i also want yeah. to see them trying cool stuff yeah. and i think they sort of like that return to trying just cool stuff that they've got in the, they had in like the black books the second thing black shields i think are fairly cool in how the rules are and quite customizable mm-hmm. like we used to only get like four sets mm-hmm. of black shield rules and now they I'm I'm going to pluck a number, but 16 or 18 or something like that. Black Jeez, Shield that rules. Many. Yeah, it might even be a, a little bit more than that. Wow. But, yeah. That's I'm, cool. I'm going to I mean, go 16. It allows you to create, yeah, let's go 16. It allows you to create that um, second legion army mm. or le- uh, is 11th? Yeah, 11th legion army that you want to create. It, it allows you to create your own chapter within the heresy. Yeah, and which is really, which is a cool idea. It lets people both fitting in with fitting in with the fluff which is important for like this semi-historical war game semi mm. like future semi-future historical war game so that's important but also allowing a more sandbox aspect that still fits within that mm-hmm. which is really nice yeah. and it's got some just wild stuff that you can do the special characters and this is always a big one like you mentioned you flick to sanguinius and i think mm. it's where a lot of people flick if you're not interested in Black Shields or Shattered Legions, it's going to be, well, I suppose they Solar Auxilia, which we'll get onto in a sec, but it's mm. going to be the special characters. And they're all mm. variations of Praetors, like with slight tweaks. It's not mm. like, oh, this yeah. one changes your entire army massively. You have mm. a slight benefit with some opportunity costs thrown in, so you've got other things that are worse. Mm-hmm. And it feels like a nice... Do you remember how in, in book one, like, Loken and Abaddon were just, like, Praetors with a different weapon, maybe a Warlord yeah. trait? Mm-hmm. It, it sort of feels like that. So they're, like, not mm-hmm. these Fafnir Rand style, oh, your army is all weapon skill plus one on the charge yeah. and stuff like that. So they've got this nice balance there. Mm-hmm. So it sort of feels a bit of a return in at least how they're treating it in that way back to the black books. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, they, I found it very reminiscent of the, what some, just some of the wild stuff that was going mm-hmm. on at that time. So I think they've made a good effort there. Obviously the rules need tightening up, but mm-hmm. that could have been said. Like, and then there's some massively glaring ones in this one, right? Massively glaring, but also haywire termites were broken as hell in Heresy 1, mm. or re-rollable Presandium shields for shield caps mm-hmm. were yeah. broken as hell. So it's not any stuff that has just gone on forever because they Heresy has been a largely passion project for yeah, a long time. It, it, I mean, there, there is no perfect rule system, right? And the, the sheer amount of information that you need to produce uh, it, it can't always go through that level of of uh, play testing and discernment. I, I know if I was put in that position, there would be a lot more mistakes in these books. So I, I really can't be too critical or too hard on the writers behind this. 
not really knowing the time scales that they have to work on these things. Uh, and if they keep can solve these, or just if you know, there was the Night Lords thing, not being able to charge, just common sense should override yeah. that. And you should say with your friend, like, yes, of course you could charge. Uh, but for me, <clears throat> main selling po uh, point of these books, law and pillow plates, which I can enthusiastically say are very good. They retain the quality of the older books. Mm. Uh, and the, the color plates, they give you, if you look at the color plate, I think, oh, I could collect a small zone mortalis force. It's done its job. And I've I experienced that quite a few times uh, in this book. So shall we pull um, up a color plate and you can take us through what you were looking for in a good color plate? So this is one of the cool color plates that I like the look of. I, I, I like that, that you have red on one side and not the other. Um, I like the, the 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 difference in the color plate in the um, shoulder pad here. Just gives you an interesting uh, view on the army. Uh, what else do you have? There's a world eater one in here that is really doing the rounds, and a lot of people have asked about this already because you're starting to see the change in the legion. How the blue is being bleached, mm. and then you have the blood splatter and the red becoming more and more of a thing. In the legion you see the corn symbol and eventually we all know it, it turns completely into red but you're seeing the degradation here and it's a weird thing uh, I'm, I'm painting up a car the bloody at the moment but i'm doing it in the red and white scheme heresy 1.0 i feel all world eaters should have the blue and white scheme but now it feels like we're moving almost into mid heresy yeah in a, in a weird sort of timeline so i i if I was painting a World Eaters army for myself, it would be in the red and white scheme, or be in this scheme as it's it's becoming. Yeah, uh, yeah, I get that. I get what you mean by like the choices that they've made. Even the Legion rules that are on the Legions seem to be more mid heresy rather than early heresy, where you say mm. you've got like, oh, Sons of Horus now gain having merciless fighter as the main one, versus mm. having whatever the whatever the shoot within 12 inches one was called which yeah so the the style of the legion's play is even changing as well as as you said like these color palettes that we get in which are yeah and it's the, so it's the little details there that you're looking for like the bleached shoulder pads and it's, it's things like that you actually... a, a way into a new project yeah but i do want to talk about one of the black shield uh forces uh, and I'm desperately flicking through this document to try and find it because I can't even remember the name of them. But it's so this is one of the schemes uh, that I've used for myself in the creation of my own projects. Uh, so I painted these oh, when when the first Black Shields book came out. Hold on, let me get some good lighting on this bad boy as well. So these guys were invented as terror troops. Uh, they were main, mainly used to reef behind the lines of any advancing forces. Uh, and I wanted to, well, I had a bunch of Mark Threes that I didn't really know what to do with, and I didn't want to just paint them up as Blood Angels. So I thought, let's let's do something a little bit more interesting with them. Uh, I've mixed a lot of these with Necromunda miniatures. And I wanted to have a, uh, the, the metallics all use color shift to give them a, an irradiated look. And I have to say, when I was creating these, I was watching quite a lot of Chernobyl at the time. The TV show. <laughs> oh, is that, was that these at the time of that coming out along that timeline? Yes. Yeah. Well, when, when I was painting these, certainly. So I wanted. Yeah, I remember to, this yeah. dude specifically. Yeah, he's uh, he he's done the rounds quite a bit. I, I wanted like a very heavily weathered. I just love the idea of black shields being gathered up from some worlds, being flash indoctrinated, and being thrown thrown into a war that they have no understanding of. They've been given a bolter, they've been given a blade, and they've been given strength, and they've just been told to go and reave the universe clean of life. They have no formal training or understanding or philosophy beyond that. And it, it stands in stark contradiction to uh, the, the Legionis Astartes of that time, where they have goddamn philosophers reading to them. But these guys, they're just, just nuts and sent out into the universe. So that is the background of your like, yeah. Black Shields Force, is it? Black Shields Force, yes. Yeah. Uh, but th this is the scheme I wanted to focus on that I wanted to talk about because it's so unusual. This scheme. Yes, yes. 
this has to be my favorite scheme, I think, uh, because whenever we talk about miniature painting, it's always the big scene, always contrast, 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 contrast. But in this, you have a, uh, a, a light white, almost like a death wing-ish uh, white, but then you have like this light lilac color that's barely registering. And it, were, it, it has a very unsettling feel to it overall. It's um, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely absolutely gorgeous how how this has been rendered. This is actually an update of a Mark V Marine scheme in the original book six mm. that had. I would still remember it, it was the page opposite where Pariah Armor and Pariah Bolters were, like the actual war gear page in book six for Black Shield. There was a Mark V Marine with these like sort of swirls around its studs. Mm. And the, that scheme is actually an update of that. That's my favourite Black Shield it's the scheme. Garrison, Garrison host. Mm. And, and uh, there, there, there are some painted examples in the back, but uh, if you want to see them, go buy the book. Um, <laughs> no, it's well, it's almost them that colour palette. Nothing could ever do it justice because it's just so, so good with those swirls and yeah. stuff. <clears throat> um, I, this is a very good basis. Weather the hell out of this afterwards, I think you'll end up with a very, very, very good scheme. Yeah, I, I'd love to. It's too white I mean, for me, that, okay. versus the colour palette. Is the... But it's done its job. It's uh, Because I was about to say, I would love to create a small army of them. So perfect. The colour... The colour um, the the palette job. works. The colour palette, palette works. So I was thinking, oh, just a small Zoma Talis force. Maybe a few guys just to see whether I like the scheme. There we go. It's, it's done its yeah. job. So finally on Beta Garmin, Solar have become a big, I say a big force, yeah. they have highlighted them being an allied detachment, which I think is a, it's, it's the clear place for them in Heresy 2. I don't think they work as a primary army, but there's so many people now starting to play Solar, which I think is a positive for the game in that there are things that don't just feel like a three up save Marine to play against. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is saying this is someone that plays about half of my games with Militia and Solar. So I think that influx of another force that fits the background is going to be a positive overall rather than and rather than detracting from Marine players that are out there, oh, we've got less Marines. I do think it's a positive book that he's introduced that. The, the, the complaint with heresy it's that it's just space marines v space marines uh but no we've got custodies we've got uh mechanica uh it would be nice to see uh like the militia come later on like the, the cultic horde later on uh but i can understand why they wouldn't want to introduce that straight away anything for more variety and the models the other models drop get gorgeous as well they passed the eye test yeah yeah like he's, we i think we spoke about this in a previous episode right like it's about the exact nuances of those models. And I'm going to guess issue eight off the top of my head entirely. Yes, let's just say <laughs> Let's eight. just say then. But in there. Yeah, he's a solid release, I think, if you can get past the glaring, like some glaring rules mistakes. But I don't think that should put anyone off, like the actual content of this book. I think of all the releases we've seen for the Heresy so far, the book releases, this is the best. Of Heresy 2, you mean? Of Heresy yeah. 2, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 knew, I knew what you meant. Yeah. I knew what you meant. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her of all the releases of Heresy 2.0, I think this has been the best so far. Yeah. Um, right. Miles, can I tell you about Drilled? And getting Drilled. What? So, getting Drilled, yeah, okay. So tell Drilled, do you know about Drilled the Rule in the Old World? What the hell are you talking about? So drilled. Oh, old, oh, oh the FAQ, right. Sorry. Yeah, I'm a bit just, just com I haven't had my morning coffee because my machine is broken. Uh, yes. Okay. So apparently there's like this big FAQ debate. Uh, again, we were talking about this before the show, but uh, I feel, I mean, especially as content creators, we have a pressure to produce something every week. And for yourself, mm. working on YouTube primarily nearly every day, I think that is a consequence of COVID. As people have, have got out of COVID now, I I don't think that's 
concern for them anymore. I mean, even for myself being deeply entrenched in like mm. all, all, all the debate, everything, I, I've barely seen any of this debate at all or, or this big Ferrari. Um, yeah, so, so explain to me and, and many of our audience, I guess, what uh, what the hell is drilled is. Um, what, what, so, what, what, what is this? So drilled. Just what, what is this, Max? Right. Um, I'll explain what drilled is, and then there's another there's another question there. But drilled is a rule that allows you to cha- uh, change your frontage to... So basically, I can go into a marching column and back out of a marching column, or expand my front ranks or not, redress the ranks, for free before a movement. Now, there was then arguments over whether or not you could drilled and then charge. And it, that's because a marching column allows you to triple move, but you can't make a charge move. But you can declare a charge. So you you declare a charge in a marching column, drilled out, and move. And that was cleared up in the FAQ because there was a big argument at the start of the old world over what constituted a move. Is it just a move in a remaining move section? Or is it anything... I'm going to say in the movement phase was the main... I think. No one really was thinking that any move, which has now been clarified, any move on the table that isn't a falling back. So if I pick up my models and I shuffle them back two inches because I've given ground, that's a move and I can redress the ranks. So super, super useful rule to just play with your frontage of your units. And this is, Miles, you were asking midweek about like your, your regiment bases and trays. Of what should you yes. get? And I recommended yeah. something that you could change the shape of on multiple smaller trays. And it's exactly and, because and I've of this. I actually found something really good for that. Um, hold on, let me drag it up. Uh, so I haven't bought any yet, but these. Uh, yeah, mini mag trays. Yeah, yeah. Th- I know the problem is they don't have like that nice lip to them, but it does give the ability to like put them together. Yeah, so th- these are really, really good, actually. Um, mm. I've got a discount code that I'll drop in that I don't get any oh. cash from. It's just, like, I don't get a, a thing. It's, I was given trades. Don't get a kickback. All right. No, yeah, no no kickbacks. Yeah, that's it. But I've got a code this could be our that first I'll drop sponsorship. in the comments. Yeah. Let's, con- let's contact them. Send <laughs> us free stuff. And we'll... Well, I, I, I got a discount on some of their products so that I could test them out before recommending them. So I wanted them for my Solar Auxilia. So I mm-hmm. used them in all the Solar Auxilia games on the channel. Um, mm-hmm. oh, and he great. gave me a discount code for, for people. So I'll drop it in the comments. But Oh, amazing. Cool. Good, good, good. Yeah, he's, they, I, I, they're I'm really gonna good. I'm going to be buying these, so I need, I need that code. Yeah, and don't let the... He does ones you can get trays without the tag on for some of them. Uh-huh. And then magnetic tags that just stick onto the tray and sit on top of it which are actually really good, handy. He's, uh-huh. The tags are really, really useful, more than I thought they were going to be. Um, yeah, especially for, like, wheeling around. And, yeah, that, 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 I, I really like that back tag for that because, I mean, if you've ever played Old World, trying to manoeuvre units, especially if you have, like, really heavy miniatures, hmm. like, you also have the thing you put a bit too much pressure on and, like, you, you, you can mess your unit up doing that or just with this, yeah, just... Turn pivot. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. I like I, that and I will say I've not used the the old world trays, just because I already oh. had a load of MDF trays. But mm-hmm. certainly for heresy, they've done me well. Now, so that drilled FAQ changed everything, gone further Ooh. than we ever thought. No, and it's okay, and right. like, as in like it can like change it on falling back. Now for your question sort of before miles they didn't reach your radar at all it did at the start of of the old world and then it's just how much you delve into groups right so it's so what what groups are well there's the fifty one thousand the old world (coughs) members group and then there's is that facebook or yeah 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 facebook and then there's i think a seventeen thousand one, and it was just popping off every single day on on those groups so i, I saw it because i i skim a couple of groups not every day but every now and then 
and it was always on there. It was always on there. And yeah, it, it, it's over. It's over is all the arguments, but... What do you mean it's over? <laughs> it's, oh, you mean I it's mean, settled? Every, yeah, the, the it, debate's it's solved. Settled. Yeah, the, the debate's been settled. I do think the FAQ has thrown up a couple of questions that in hindsight are like, oh, oh, now there's a further question there. Uh, like frenzy units. Uh, it says if the unit in front can... Uh, essentially, like if the unit in front has the chance of making a charge, the frenzy unit behind has to make, declare a charge. Now, does that mean that the the unit in front, like just because they can declare a charge, the, the mm. frenzy unit behind has to declare a charge? Or is it if the unit in front declares a charge, the other one has to? So it's a bit of a 50-50 a ruling that even on first read of it, I didn't really expect. I thought it had mm. cleared it up. And then in the days that have come, like, oh, he's, he's thrown a bit of a spanner in. But it's at least good to see ongoing ongoing support like that's really mm -hmm. quick for the game uh, yeah and i guess thoughtful responses as well i mean it feels like everything that the old world is doing it, it's thoughtful it's considered it, it's it's done well yeah yeah now what wasn't considered miles is on mm. <laughs> on wednesday me and a guest richie hi richie um, Yo, Rich. <laughs> we put out a, a video just talking about his. He won the first GT to be held. Oh, I say won. Oh. He came, he best overall, so he got most like best best game votes. He got most best game votes, army votes, <laughs> and wins to combine into. And he might not have got the best of any singular one of them, but sure, what, the combined score dwarfs, which has been really low in the <sighs> world. The Wohammer statistics, which have been putting dwarfs like right near the bottom, I think third from the bottom, he managed to get it with dwarfs. Uh, all those soft scores adding up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, but maybe, maybe. So that has then, like, I interviewed him and just as an offhand question was like, well, what are you thinking for, <laughs> what are you thinking for future ideas on the list? And he'd been like he'd had a few drinks. I was I'd had a few drinks, <laughs> and so he just spitballing some ideas like completely off the top of the head. And he was like, yeah. "You know what, man? Like, bound items don't make your wizard a wizard, or don't make your model a wizard. And dispelling right. says you nominate a wizard in range of the en enemy wizard. Oh God! Which okay. would then imply that you can't <laughs> dispel them." And it, I'm not suggesting this. I'm not suggesting this, and neither is Richie. No. We've like no. it's so. Is this two second comment on a video that we just like? Do you know we're just joking about like we're doing <laughs> like we tend to do in the yeah. cast? And man, that blew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, can you read out one of the comments? Find, find one now. I want you to read out. I want you to read. <laughs> no, out well, I, I, I won't tell you the exact readout. But there was it morphed on the it, so it morphed on one of the groups into the tos so that's bringing in other people, like other people with channels, because it's the square hammer guys got like dragged into it. The tos had said that he could do this. I can't believe he cheated. He's like, man, this was future list ideas, and he never he didn't have any bound items in his list. And the tos had apparently told him that what to do, even though they never got mentioned. Um, Oh, it just it so, just morphed to the point where right, he was okay. like, I don't know whether these guys have even watched the video that they're so raging about. So that <laughs> that happened this week. He's, you also can surely dispel bound items because under that logic, you wouldn't be able to cast them because only wizards can cast spells. So it surely wouldn't be the case. But it's been... <laughs> it's, it's been going on. I'm, I'm... Oh, the, the, was there like a question? So, Miles, we've been joined by a visitor. Oh, you've been joined by a visitor. Yeah, my little dog, Riley. Hello, Riley. So he keeps me company in my office day to day, and he's just settled down. And if you ever do uh, an event here, or if you do like a, a weekend with me or a studio day, you can meet Riley if you want. On special request, I'll bring him along. I have to warn you, he is a little bit 
crazy. Aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So that essentially just covers <laughs> like that that offhand comment that blew up a little bit. But yep. yeah, he's the internet's a funny internet. place, man. The internet's a funny what place, man. Yeah, I'm just I I was just sort of hoping that the guest doesn't get put off doing more stuff. Like you've sort of got to be a a little bit inured to anything. Yeah, well, hopefully, like, yeah, and I think he will be. Like, he's he's pretty chill about things. It's not like he's going to get like hecklers in the street or anything. No, no. Well, he was he was telling me that <laughs> he pre he's once been on a radio show for like BBC or something like that because he's like quite a he quite a good tattoo artist to the level that uh-huh. he would get interviewed by BBC. Yeah, and. They st- it was like just after the Euros and he started he got interviewed on his tattooing and they started asking him about like the football and he knows nothing about the football. <laughs> so it just got the worst the worst look in interviews. Do you all. remember that guy um who he was brought on as a tech expert in the BBC, but he was interviewing for a, a janitorial position there? A janitorial so national position. news. Yeah, your janitorial position, and um, he, he he was there. He was asked, "Okay, what what do you think of the, I don't know, uh, upcoming influence of AI in work?" I said, uh, I I think it's a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that sort of thing. <laughs> was he how he described it? And we'd been talking about it just before we went on, and then it seems like he's just a jinx with it. But yeah, that that has been my week anyway. Editing videos. Looking at FAQs and new rules. What have you been doing? Anything that is more interesting? I, uh, I yes, I've, I've painted a dragon. Well, you painted a dragon. I painted a dragon. I painted an actual goddamn dragon. Look at this dragon. You oh, you were saying. This you were yes, saying when so it first came cool. out, you wanted to paint a dragon. Yeah, this is so. Um, had a commission about eight years ago for like a high health cavalry bus army. Uh, and the guy sent it back to me uh, to rebase the entire thing. And he wanted a dragon added to it. So I painted it like a big, great Welsh red dragon. Uh, <laughs> and I painted this in a day. And the video will be called, rather inspiringly, how to paint a red dragon in a day. <laughs> What's the dragon's name, Miles? It surely David. must... David? <laughs> Did you just say David? David. What's the name of the dragon that got drunk? Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, you don't know? Um, I thought no. there was that story about the dragon that got drunk and had a fight with another dragon. No, no, no. Um, I, 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 yeah, <clears throat> it's how we got the... Um, Welsh dragon, uh, the the red Welsh dragon on our emblem. <laughs> Do you want me to cut that emblem. out because you don't know its name? No, 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 no. no <laughs> that's a fascinating. Bit of, of, I just, I, I, I can't. I, I don't think. I don't think they had names. Or if they did, I certainly can't remember them. Uh, the stories I was told. So a couple of Welsh, uh, a couple of dragons got drunk, got stuck under a mountain. Dude came along and he wanted to create a castle on the mountain. Every night he'd fall asleep. The foundations would be levelled. He'd wake up the next day, try and build the castle again, levelled. Uh, he got put into this magical sleep until this young little scamp came along uh, who said, I know what the problem is. There's a couple of dragons in the mountain, mate. So he he opened up the mountain. They came out, had a bit of a bish bash bosh, and the red dragon fought off the white dragon. And it turns out that young little scamp was, uh, it was either Taliesin or Merlin. Can't remember which one. Uh, uh, there's one, uh, one of those two fa- famous folklore heroes. Uh, so that's the reason we got a Welsh, uh, a, like a red dragon on on our uh, uh, flag. And why, in extension, the elf dragon is red. There yeah, you go. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because I I am Welsh, so I paint red. I paint dragon red. That's that's what I've been doing. <laughs> so been rebasing that army for myself. Uh, I've been toying along with the Black Legion force, and this is rather weirdly the first member of my Black Legion army. Have you done any more work on this since last week? No. Ah, you showed us this last week. The same. It all blurs into but one for you. I have done this because I know you said this is your favourite face in 40k. It is. 
It remains my favourite place in 40k. Yeah. I want, I've done a little tutorial that will be up next week when I'm in Australia on how to create battered, bruised, worn, Terminator-esque ruined flesh. Mm. Looks great. And I'm, st- I'm still debating whether to go non-metallic or true metallic with the army, but I feel like I've got the forward momentum with me uh, and I, I just need to uh, uh, either mm, or get off the pot. Uh, for the Old World project, <clears throat> It's rebasing month. I finally have my bases. So everything has been put on the Dragon Graveyard bases. Everything's been put, everything's been magnetized. And I'm mm. building out the what I imagine to be the rest of the army. So I'm building the bases for the 30 Marauders. I'm building the bases for the Knights. I'm building the bases for the Dragon Ogres and, and the uh, Shagoth. Anything else I'll build on top of that, I can do as and when. But once I get all these bases together, I'll start painting them. Uh, and then that's the basis done for the entire army to be put on top of. Uh, so that's the, uh, and preparations for Australia, which has taken up a considerable amount of my time. How about you? How's your? Uh, because in our show notes, I can see that dwarves have nice feet or don't have nice feet. <laughs> so I think you what's that about? Well, I need to get the images. So can't do monster. Sounds crazy. He's, he's... We, we've just been talking. Yeah, we've just been talking about uh, coffee. Like, I need I need a coffee machine working again with some manual coffee. And you drink Monster. I, it, coffee makes me crazy. Um, sorry, no, Monster makes me crazy. I can't I can't do it. In, in what way? It, like, you run all around all over the, all over the place? No, or... I get anxious. I get really, really anxious. And my, my mood turns bleak. <laughs> bleak. Uh, I, I, bleak. I can't cope with the smallest setbacks. Like... A broken coffee machine. Fair. Fair. Right. <laughs> so, up on screen now are the dwarves that I was hunting about for. And basically, this is to supplement a dwarf army that I borrowed off Ian, who has been the dwarf player on channel and done the dwarf guide with me. So, I've just been playing about with some fairly classic ways of painting rather than trying anything crazy. Except the only thing that I've done differently is I've used Sharpies on all of the metals. Uh-huh. And do you know what? And for the amount of effort that they put in, because I needed to just like not think about them. And it's like it been in between editing, doing like this and that. I just wanted to churn out some models and enjoy mm. painting them. And it's been a very mm. low stress way of just painting. I think dwarves mm. themselves tie into that. Because they're such mm-hmm. classics of fantasy miniatures, mm. they sort of lend themselves to like looking good in a classic style. Especially mm. after seeing who tagged yeah. Hobby Hammer but, um, last week, there was some like fairly good classic style dwarves that inspired me a bit. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've been just painting these dwarves because they're in the style of that. Do you remember the old box art with the Karak Hearn dwarves on? They're like they're in green with the it's on oh, it's on screen yes. now on the yes, the, yes. On, I do on remember it's on now. one of the box covers of the um dwarf yeah so warrior box set yeah basically no no thought selected green and just got on with painting some dwarfs which has been a nice little distraction mm. from editing and things like that mm. but yeah that's been that's been my week more no, than no, it, more I, than I thought I was doing. To close out the show, uh, I saw a meme uh, where Picasso was asked, why do you paint? And he said, I paint not to think. I think it's a fairly good reason to paint. Yeah, I, I paint not to think. And if I drank Monster Energy drink, I think too much. <laughs> so the rest of the day, I think I'm going to paint. Is that what Picasso said? Direct quote. Uh, it's what Wilhelm Defoe said in the movie depicting Picasso. <laughs> okay, fair enough. It's a bit of a paraphrase, but we'll let you get away with it on the hobby hammer cast. <laughs> fact, you gonna fact check me? <laughs> no, no, no one fact check Miles. <laughs> See, I'm Defoe. getting adversarial now. I'm getting confrontational because I haven't had my goddamn coffee. I'm yeah. lo- low energy confrontational. <laughs> My, my, it's a disconcerting mix. Later. Low energy confrontational. I mean, I. I'd expect and be ready for high energy confrontation, mm. but low it's, energy it's confrontation. Low energy, yeah, which is like spikes of viciousness. Um, it, it, it's like being in um, 
road rage mode all all morning. So uh, yeah, I might I might get involved in a few road rage uh, incidents later just to break up the day. <laughs> well, you are in Swansea, so it's just fairly normal state yeah. of affairs there. Uh, and shall we close out the show there rather than rambling for yeah. 25 minutes like we did last week? Which is why if yeah. anyone noticed a weird cut, that was why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I hope everyone has a good week. And Miles, are we not doing a show next week because you're in Australia? I'm in Australia. I'm good old Australia next week. So no show coming up. So you'll have to feast on this for a couple of weeks. Um, unless we can arrange something with them over there. I very much doubt so. But I think that's down to you. I will be in this room either way. I'll see what the time difference is and we'll see if we can organise something. Otherwise, we will be seeing you fresh and dandy or caffeined and liquored up in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. See you there. In a bit. <laughs>